All right, guys, the people that are, have come on board, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, this evening we are having a conversation with Pastor Masai, the one you see on the screen. And he's a pastor in Kisumu. And uh, he's a pastor, an associate pastor there. And he's a man of God that I've known for quite some time. And I really honor and treasure his friendship. I believe in the anointing of the Lord in his life. And I'm really honored to have you today, to be having this conversation with you. Mitumishi, you call yourself teacher. You're a teacher of the word. Yes. I'm delighted to be Thank having you. this conversation with you. I'll invite you to say hi to the viewers and then kindly pray for us. I would want to say hi to each and everyone who has joined in. I pray that God will bless you and we will have a productive conversation with you. Feel free to send your comments and questions if need be. And uh, pray with us even as we continue because this is a very emotive issue, a very sensitive, that as we continue uh, discussing this, this topic together, I believe that you will be blessed and you will also be equipped to be able to help other people who may be going through grief. So welcome so much. Feel free to share this feed with each and every friend of yours and family so that everyone can be blessed. And I know that God will be with us until the end. So Amen. Uh, let us pray. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. I honor you because you are God and there is no one else like you. You are faithful, you are sovereign in all your ways, O oh Father. We may not understand your mind and your doings, so oh God, but we trust in you. The Lord, you have good plans for each and every one of us, O oh Father. And Lord God, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Father, I pray for each and every one who will tune in today, that God, they shall be blessed, O oh Father, because of this discussion, O oh God. We are not doing it by the flesh, but we are doing it by the Spirit of God. Father, I pray for Pastor Sarah together with I, even as we continue with this conversation, may you endow us with the power of the Holy Spirit, O oh God, to be able to touch lives out there. We thank you, we honor you, and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer. And I think where you, you feel like bad things should not be happening to you. And when something bad happens, when you experience a loss or something like that, then you start questioning if God really loves you, if God is really for you. Of course, in our conversation today, I want us to begin by understanding what, is, what it is that we are really talking about. What is grief, you know? And maybe you can pick it up from there. Okay. Uh, as I said earlier, thank you so much, Sarah. And we pray that the mm -hmm. Lord of all creation will stabilize the network for us so that we can be able to understand this. Grief is, a, is something that many people do not understand. And uh, just by definition, I would like to say grief is intensive sorrow that one gets after loss. And uh, previously it was loss of family members or someone, but nowadays it is about the loss of anything that we have held dear, something that we are connected to emotionally. We are talking about the loss of jobs, we're talking about loss of career, dreams. We're speaking about friends, and we also have people who are grieved for loss of things like pets. And uh, <clears throat> it's becoming something that is wider and encompasses everything that we, we, we are living with. And you see, uh, when we talk about grief, the understanding is that I have to understand a position of my grief. You have to understand the position of your grief. And together, when we understand this, it is something that man has to go through. In life, if you have lived long enough, you must have gone through grief at a point or the other. And that is what grief yeah. intensive sorrow, sadness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. And when we talk of grief, some people will just think it's just 
when you lose a loved one. But that's not what just, you know, grief entails. Grief could be as a result of disappointment, failure on your end. We have disappointments that we have maybe because of what we've been doing in life, especially during the COVID time. Yeah. So many people were grieved because they were disappointed by so many things. Uh, the expectations, mm -hmm. there is arises because there was so much expectation about something then all of a sudden it is cut short we also have today we have people who are grieved because of breakups people who are in a relationship then we have so many today. divorce can bring about grief and i've spoken to a lot of people who are grieved because of divorce and therefore mm -hmm. it encompasses mm -hmm. many things it it is about people mm -hmm. it's about it's about dreams and visions any of those mm -hmm. things that we hope, mm -hmm. if we lose them, man is always grieved about it. Yeah. Mm. That is so true. And we know that if you don't deal with grief in the right way, it can destroy your life. It can devastate you. So it's very important for one to learn how to process. And basically that's what we are here to do tonight. Yeah. We want to work to walk through and to show people that it's not, you know, sometimes somebody can embrace grief a, like a punishment or something that is unique to me. But it's important that now we open up our minds to start understanding so that we will be able to process it. Yeah. And we can look at some figures in the Bible, some, some people in the Bible that had to go through grief. And the person that I want us just to touch on a bit is Job. Yes, yes. Yeah, in the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 21, and I just I want us to read that, then we can discuss on that, so yes. that we will see how Job responded when he suffered loss, a great loss. And... Mm -hmm. Job was a man who had everything going on for him. He, and he was blameless. Yeah. He actually, that was one of the things that was really making, you know, the devil angry because he was thinking God is favoring Job, but God actually called him blameless before him. And somebody might be out there, maybe you've lost a loved one or something bad might be happening in your life and you think maybe it's a punishment from God, maybe I've done something to deserve this. But look at Job, Job was blameless before God and yet he lost everything and even his health was touched. And in Job 1.21, the word of God say, says, and he said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. This was Job's response. But we know that um, the wife did not respond the same way. You see? No. Job, him, he, he was saying no matter what happens, that I will still hold on to my faith and believe in God. But we see people really... Exactly falling away from the ways of God because of a loss or because of something that happens to them. Maybe they lose a loved one or they lose a job or something that grieves them happens, then they forsake God. What can you say about that? Yeah, it's very true that many people would lose something and many people would blame God, one, or they would bl blame someone else, or they would blame themselves. So those three dimensions always will happen when we are hit by tragedy and catastrophe. In the time of Job, when Job was losing everything, the Bible tells us uh, God was bragging to the enemy and to the devil, and he was saying, have you seen my servant Job? He is righteous yes. and blameless. He is someone who mm -hmm. had no mistake. So God mm. was... But we find that... The test came. The test came because mm -hmm. the enemy was not happy. And that is why we are mm -hmm. saying we are not to blame for the things that happen in our lives. We are not to blame yes. when something bad, a catastrophe, a breakup, the loss of a job, we cannot blame ourselves that much. But even then, we should say that grief is not bad. We are not saying that do not feel anything. 
we should feel the pain we should be emotional yes. about it but we should mm -hmm. be very careful not to fall into the grief disorder we should remain mm -hmm. in the focusing on god because when you read job actually acknowledges that he has nothing then the bible tells us that he in all these job did not charge god with anything in other words he did not blame god for anything mm. the moment we yes. blame god for anything that already mm -hmm. then shows us there is a sign of grief it is a sign of grief mm. to start blaming and especially god because he's a higher power we feel like everything mm. stopped in life. When you blame God, you're actually acknowledging everybody, everything has stopped. Then uh, when we mm -hmm. go, uh, I would love to say this, we will not expect everyone to feel the same way as we're feeling. Job's wife mm -hmm. does not feel the same way as Job. That was the closest mm -hmm. person I would want to believe would come and support Job in the grief. So when we are going through, yeah. we should always the first thing that we should focus on and never lose trust in is God. Because God will never leave us, will never forsake us. Then God will bring in yes. people to help us. Job's wife did not have the same mm -hmm. spirit as Job. And therefore, he, she mm -hmm. said, ask God and die. This is too much. We are people who will come to life and say, mm -hmm. God and die. This is too much. Mm -hmm. This life is too painful. But in all these, let us trust God and do a job. Don't charge God. Don't blame God for all that has happened because He's sovereign, He's loving, He's never changing. That's right. That is so true. Because as you're saying, Job did not make any any foolish accusations against God in the midst of his pain, in the midst of many questions, because he did not understand, he did not know the conversation that was going on in heaven he was not aware of the spiritual warfare and even the wife was not aware but we find that job understood who god was and the nature of god he knew and that's why he would be confident that god would be you know by his side as you say god will never leave us nor forsake us and i think it's it's important that we also, because how we respond to the tragedies that come our way, will determine the kind, you know, how the result, you know, how we'll come out of it and also our, our standing, our right standing before God. You see, because if we blame God and God and we speak against him, he will hold us responsible for what we say. You know, and which sometimes can cause us more harm, more damage, and lead us far away from Him. You know, so it's it's important. It's important that people watch what they say. I believe, and how they respond to the situations, they do it with understanding. And there there are some questions that we can share with people, Pastor, just to ask because somebody might be there and wondering. Am I really? <laughs> so uh, we have many questions that people would ask, and I would want to digest yes. these questions and bring them down to things like signs and symptoms. That when you're asking, yes. for example, you start asking yourself, where is God in all this? Or maybe you mm -hmm. ask, what wrong have I done to deserve this? Some people mm -hmm. would, because we, as another sign and symptom of this, is people would become suicidal. So someone would ask, yes. uh, is there any reason for me to live anymore? Mm -hmm. Maybe I should end my life because it's becoming too much. So uh, mm -hmm. asking such questions, the, the, the trend of questions that I've just spoken about, just know it is a mm -hmm. sign of depression. Why we are asking this mm -hmm. question? Because we have many people out here who are in the uh, are not in depression but who are in grief yet they do not know that they are actually in grief reason being our mm -hmm. has blocked us our culture has made us people who are we've been brought up in a culture where emotional vulnerability is a weakness yet it is not yes. our, you see so people have lived mm -hmm. with this and they cushion it with good things. They try to cushion them. But at the end of the day, when you sleep on your bed, when you're 
sitting alone in the house when you're driving your own car you're out there walking alone in your office you start asking yourself these questions is god really alive is there a reason to live again why do i fall to this is it only me what wrong have i done in life when we ask these questions then we start realizing we should realize that we are falling into a grief we are falling into a grief yes. disorder matter so it is very important for you to gauge yourself in the times of grief to start uh, uh, looking at your attitude looking at your inner questions that are unspoken that someone cannot hear the questions in your mind try to ask yourself what am i thinking about through this grief so when you find them in the line of blaming god blaming yourself or wondering whether life is worth living just know that you're getting into this grief and when you get into that it is very good and love what the bible tells us that we should cast every thought down every thought that uses itself again is the knowledge of god because many people tend to be very suicidal and actually begin living life recklessly for example maybe you start drinking too much coffee too much alcohol for example or you lot of parties you no know, some of these things that try to cushion the grief which is not good because we the more we cushion the grief in us, the more we deteriorate, the more we go down uh, the pit for that matter, the more we get darker in, in our lives. And uh, things are not good because after the coffee, after the cigarette, after the alcohol, after the sex, you will always come back to yourself and you're still asking yourself this question. So it is good That's to right. start to ask yourself this question. Open up to someone and begin seeking for help and first seek help from god and god will connect you to the right persons mm. that's right and as we are talking about god and given that this um broadcast is really to bring glory and honor to god exactly. um when somebody is saying that uh, god is punishing me that's why the he's taken my child he's taken my husband he's taken my mom or whoever passing or maybe i've lost this job because probably somebody is aware of sin in their lives i did something and uh maybe because of this thing that i did god now is punishing me for it and i want us really to make our viewer understand where grief and sorrow came from you see because it came from the garden from the fall um sorrow and grief did not come from heaven it came from the fall of Adam and Eve. And maybe you can just expound on that a bit. Yeah, when Adam and Eve were, were created, this is very true. When Adam and Eve were created, they were living in a blissful life. And one person asked me a question, what if there was another chapter between chapter 2 and chapter 3 of Genesis? What would that chapter look like? And to me, it is a blissful garden where a man and a woman are living blissfully together with the animals. There is no death. There is no sorrow. And God promises us in the book of Revelation 21 verse 4 that eventually we will go back to that state where there will be no sorrows. Our tears will be wiped away. There would be no death. There would be no grief. But now the origin of grief is a weakness that came when man fell. So when man fell, we were succumbed to all this uh, trouble. There was death, which is the key factor to grief. There was loss of the garden. That was grief. And uh, we must understand that it doesn't come from God. I don't know how we can emphasize this, but it is very true. God is the source of grief. He is a help. That is why when Jesus came and died on the cross, he bore our grief. He bore our souls that we able to suffer the sorrow and to suffer the grief that punishment was upon jesus christ so the punishment that was yes. upon jesus to all believers it cannot be a punishment to me again if jesus bore the punishment mm -hmm. i don't bear mm -hmm. the punishment the punishment is upon jesus so when grief happens it happens because of life deuteronomy our uh, uh, verse uh chapter 30 and verse 19 god says i have set before you life and death then he tells us choose life when we choose life we may fall into problems we may fall into catastrophes into troubles why because we're still in a fallen world 
we are still in a weak world, but God is a present help in time of need. We only have to call on him, then he will come. He doesn't punish us because if he were the one punishing me because of my sin, punishing me with grief and loss and catastrophe, then he would not be there to help me. He knows there would be grief. There would be catastrophe, there would be COVID-19, there would be loss of a job, there would be the death of a loved one, but he's present, a present help in time of need, asking us to only call on him, then he will help us. So God is not the source of grief. The source of grief is because of this fallen world, which is weak and we vulnerable to the things of this world. Mark what Jesus said in the book of John 17. Jesus says, I'm praying mm -hmm. Not that you take them out of this world, but that in this world mm -hmm. they have, he says, I have prayed for them in this world that we may be able to do certain things, unite ourselves one to another, love one another, and to preach the gospel. So as we do this, we will fall into things that are not pleasant, but that does not mean that it is God who afflicts us. He's a loving God, and in him there is no evil. That's right. That's right. I agree with you. And when, when its sorrow has come about because of your failure, because of something that you have done, because what happens is when somebody does something and mm -hmm. they, are, they get, you know, because they will get the conviction and they will know probably because they hurt people, even those people make them know that you hurt me. And they will cause them, you know, to grieve, to feel, to be maybe heartbroken or things like that. We find that sometimes people take a long time to recover. And some people, like, let's say, for instance, some people uh, despair altogether. Let's mm -hmm. say you've heard of cases of people who have failed exams and they're grieved about it. Some even have killed themselves, you know, especially young people. So how is it? somebody can process you know when so that you don't get now into that place where you are actually running away you get into drugs you get into other like what you are uh, you are talking about doing other things because you don't want to face yourself you don't want to face the problem what about if the sorrow is from what you've done from sin how do you then address it and be able to overcome so that you don't dwell on the past, you don't live in the past and you're not, you know, held hostage by your past where you cannot go beyond the scene. Yeah. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and uh, it's a very, very important point because many people are falling into this. You find you've done yeah. something wrong and you feel like this thing that I did in the year 1976 is catching up mm -hmm. with you. <clears throat> yet you're born again. Now, let me speak to those ones who are born again first. The thing mm -hmm. that we need to do is to have a very good foundation. Understand God. Have a nature uh, that walks with God. You see? Not mm -hmm. only flesh, not only Sunday going. Let's look at Job, who is our subject that we have chosen to use tonight. Yes. Job, the Bible tells us he used to offer sacrifices when the kids said, mm -hmm. To celebrate. He did not do this because it was a Bible written then. He did this because his heart was with God. So because his heart yes. was with God, this okay. shake came. <clears throat> the laws came there. There was death. There was the loss of property. But he could only stand strong. Reason being, mm -hmm. he understood the nature of God. We can understand mm -hmm. the nature of God walking with God. So for us who were born again, who are believers, may we have that strength, that desire to walk and know God mm -hmm. personally. Not what my pastor said, not what the book says, but there is that personal spiritual relationship with God. In Romans 8 mm -hmm. and in 16, the Bible says the Spirit of God himself testifies within our yes. spirit we are children of God. So in times of grief, that is yes. something that we have to remember. I am still a child of yes. God and God is not punishing me for yes. this. So we have to understand and have, get this base, walking with God. Let it be the foundation so that we, when, when this grief comes, the catastrophes come, you're able to stand strong. 
And I'm not saying that those of us who are born again will never go through grief. They will go through grief yeah. one time or the other. But when the storms yeah. come, we'll know where the righteous run to. When the foundations of the earth are shaken, where do the righteous run to? We run back to God. We run back to God and trust him. This is what Job said. Though he slay me, yet will I trust yes. in him. So whatever the catastrophe that comes in life, we must still be able to trust in God. So we might have done things that are wrong. Remember, you repented about them. John, first John, mm -hmm. the first John chapter 1 and one. The Bible says nice. we, we, we confess our sins to God. He is faithful mm -hmm. and to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there is nothing about yeah. your past sin that is catching up with you. God has forgiven you mm -hmm. and cleansed you. And he, as far as the east is from the west, so has he taken away yeah. all your sins. So we cannot say that what I did yesterday is catching up with me. Mm -hmm. Now, the mistake yeah. that we do. And when we mm -hmm. have done this in life, we find that they have led us into sorrows. They have led us into uh, grief. They have led us into heart. Maybe you made a choice. Uh, and allow me to say this. We don't, especially those ones into relationships, we have to really begin with, start with God before, before you yes. just get the, uh, what do we say? He is, he's tall, he's black, he's handsome, he has all these things. We don't have to go with that. Before, I, I, I know yes. for this, sorry for that. I, I tell people this, before you fall That's in love, true. before you fall in love, fall on your knees. Yes. When we start with God, yes. not how, we, we will not invite sorrow and catastrophe because mm -hmm. the blessings of the Lord, they are no sorrow. So as we walk, mm -hmm. Start with God. Even when we are in grief, may we begin mm. with then the others. Begin with God, then God yeah. will connect you to people who will be able to lift you. And uh, do not focus on the grief. Do not focus on the loss. Because the more you, mm -hmm. uh, you think about the loss, the more you think mm -hmm. about what's happened, the bigger it becomes. It becomes so big. Yeah. It obscures God. You see, one lady was mm. grieved by the Bible, and her name is Mary Magdalene. She was grieved because mm. of the death of Jesus. Then going to the grave, she found that Jesus' body was not there, and she was obscured by tears. She was crying that she could not be able to see God. When we sorrow, yes. let us sorrow in the Lord. When we hurt, let us hurt in the Lord. When we are grieved, mm. let us grieve in the Lord, and he will bring us quickly. He will bring us faster out of that because he knows the way. That is so true. I agree with you. The Lord is our anchor. So no matter what you're going through, just as we've had, even if the sorrow is from sin, let it be a godly kind of sorrow that will lead you to repentance, that you will know God is the one still who will be able to pick you up, who will be able to strengthen you, and will give you the power also to continue on this journey. And the other point that I want us to look at, because sometimes you one can obsess with their sorrow and think that this is just unique to me. This is just my trouble. Nobody else knows the, the suffering or the pain or what I have, the trouble that I have to go through. And when somebody has that kind of mentality, it is so difficult to minister to them. Actually, I will share with you of a lady I went to minister to. She's not been well. And I went to see her seeking to minister to her to be of encouragement. But I tell you, I could not, because she's grieving over, there are other issues that she has, but she's also unwell. And because of all that she has had to endure, I could not get any word through to her. Because she feels you don't understand. You don't understand my pain. I couldn't be of any encouragement. Right now I can just pray from far. But how do we help people to understand that they need to open up to others, you know, to be able to comfort them, to be able to encourage them, that they need to receive from people. Otherwise, if they see it as their 
own misery, their own personal suffering that nobody else understands. And we know that, you know, in the book of First Corinthians 10, 13, the word of God says that there is no temptation taken you that is not common to man. That whatever it is that we go through is actually not unique to you. There is another person that is going through maybe worse than what you're going through. What can you say about that? Thank you. Uh, when we say this, it is not that we are minimizing someone's sorrow. It is that we want to be yes. with them. We have a good heart to be with them. Some people may not know how yes. to be with these people who are suffering in grief. Because truth be told, they mm -hmm. cannot listen. It is hard because their minds are clogged. And you know, when sorrow and grief come, Satan normally uses it as a door to get in other things in our mm. lives. That is when he starts mm -hmm. whispering mm. about how useless we are, how friendless we are, how godless we are. Mm. But every time we are in mm. grief, we just allow that men would come, ladies would come, friends would come and minister to us. Another example with Job. His friends came. Three of them did not know what to speak. In fact, the eldest three did not know what to do. Only Eliphaz, who spoke by the Spirit of God, knew what to do, knew what to do. And at the end, we find that God is charging the three. He's charging them for speaking out of tone, out of tune, you see. So as for the people who are breathing fast, open your heart. Allow people to come in. Because a symptom of grief is another that we withdraw. We lack enthusiasm. We don't want to get out. We lock ourselves in. And you know, when we are isolated, the Bible says the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He doesn't come to destroy, to kill, mm -hmm. and to steal. The, 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 it goes like mm -hmm. that. He steals you from the people that you love. He makes you alone. You become yeah. like a ranger. When you are a lone ranger, mm -hmm. then... It's possible for him to destroy you at that point. But when you are with people, it is not easy. They protect you. They give you a covering. When I lost my brother, the following year I lost my sister, I grieved so much. I could not be able yes. to, to do anything. I could not pray because praying becomes very difficult. But because I allowed people to pray around me, even though I'm not listening to their words, but I am allowing them to pray, to fill the atmosphere with the spirit of God. I was able to understand why I am going through that grief. And actually, I came out very fast. I did not grieve for more than three months because people continued yeah. praying around me. And every time they are praying, even after the burial, I used to send them texts or call them and tell them, thank you for what you have done. Though I didn't feel it, I heard that God is good, but I allowed them to continue ministering to me. Then they magnify God. They fill the atmosphere with God, not with other things. We must allow the people. Then another thing I want to say is, turning this coin around, your people who are grieving and those ones who are support, the support group. Now this support group should mm -hmm. understand that much more than a wit uh, uh, being witnesses. These people who are grieving need what I normally call a witness. Instead of witnessing to them, just be with them. Just be around them. They may reject you, they may push you aside, but be there. Just be available. When they want to cry, mm -hmm. cry. And don't, don't refuse them mm -hmm. to cry. Because one thing about grief we must know is that grief is not a sin. Grief is yes. not a sin. As I was sharing with mm. you earlier, uh, Jesus grieved. The Bible tells us when he want, went to the grave of Lazarus, trying to raise Lazarus, yeah. then there was this thing mm. that happened. and uh, Everybody is not believing. The Bible says Jesus grieved in his spirit. God is grieved. Mm. And we, Ephesians chapter 4, we can also grieve mm. the Holy Spirit. So grief in itself mm. is an emotion is an emotion that goes through us. But when we allow people with us to be with people and people with us, that circle of a help group, that circle of mm. fellow, that circle of prayer, then the enemy mm. has no chance to bring in now suicidal yeah. thoughts and to 
other things to throw in what he wants. He has no way because I'm shielded by God. I am shielded by friends. Amen. That is true. And I, I remember recently I saw an illustration. This is on the negative, but I believe also on the positive it's the same. But this was just talking about um, the way you shouldn't hang out with the wrong kind of, you know, people with, uh, with wrong groups, you know, something like that. And so they had put a good pair and a, a rotten pair together with a good pair. A pair, or like, let's say like any other fruit, a mango. And the, because they were together, this mango that was good also started getting bad becoming bad but i believe that's on the negative but i believe also when you hang out with people that are full of joy that are full of life even if you're grieving their life and their joy might trouble you as well it will also brighten you up when you're around people that are full of life if you just isolate your yourself the devil can really take you out you can get to a place of depression but if you hang around now people that are joyous, full of life, and you just spend time with them. And as you said also, when you also allow people to pray for you, you know, or with you, it's so important because also that is giving you life, that is bringing you life. 